turn aside. Um, can't see my mouse. Hold on. Maybe not as smooth as I thought. Just, uh, <laughs> Hold on. Uh, it might be because I shared the photo contest and not my whole screen. So let me. So I think that'll fix it. Okay. By the way, can everyone hear us okay? Raise a hand or anything if you can. Ron, can you hear us? Can you raise a hand if you hear us? Maybe that's a no. Ron, sleeping already. <laughs> Don't sleep yet, Ron. I got to give your images some bad scores. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they hear us or not. <laughs> that woke them up. Alan, you want to turn on your sound for a sec and see if it comes through? Can everyone hear us online? Actually, I'll see a green box. If... I'm not seeing a green box. I hear box. you. I can hear you through Alan's. Yeah. 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 Okay. All right. And I think we're good. I think Ron took good. Okay. All right. So we'll get started here. Okay. Cranford Milburn assigned B, long yeah. exposure. <laughs> at the pier. Okay, so really nice composition. I love the way you have the pier kind of diagonal um, going through the scene. I think you have it cropped really nicely. I like the effect on the water. I don't even mind like the tracks in the sand. They, they, I think they add to some interest to the image. Your, your colors are pretty good. Um, nice seven. <clears throat> Waiting to taxi. Okay, so so it's always hard to catch this propeller um, and get the full rotation. And they didn't get the full rotation, but pretty darn close. Um, I, I, my only wish here is that you didn't cut the um, um, the wheels off. Um, but otherwise, it's a, it's very nicely done. Seven. <laughs> Solo burst. Okay, good capture of fireworks. I like the dark background. Um, same thing here. I wish you didn't crop the, the bottom off, but you know, th that's okay. I, I like, you know, fireworks like this are nice. Um, I always like to include a foreground of some sort in it, in it as well, but you know, sometimes you can't do that. You caught and exposed the fireworks perfectly. I like that you have a, um, a stroke line around it. Seven. <clears throat> Commemorative Air Force P-51. Okay, another really good capture of the um, color. And again, it's, it's not easy to, to do that. Your, your plane looks pretty sharp. Um, you got a little blur in the background, which is good. You know, it's always hard to catch the exact propeller speed because all the engines go at different speeds. You know, they're going faster and slower as the plane is moving. So um, this looks like it's right after takeoff. Um, I think your composition is good. You know, I might, I might just burn down, you know, the orange building and the back is a little bit bright. Just remember your eye always goes to the brightest and or sharpest part of an image. And what I like to do for competition stuff is kind of go through, like I, I have my image already and I'll throw it in with a bunch of other pictures in Lightroom or, or wherever I'm using and click through it. And I say, what's the first thing I see, right? And if it's not the main subject, I stop and, and I think about it. So. The, the first thing that I saw on this is that orange building in the back because it's so bright. It just pulls your eye away from this. So just be careful of distracting things like that. Otherwise, it, this image is perfect. So, ghostly dock. Okay, so nice. You know, I, I'm assuming it's a long exposure to get the, that that kind of ethereal effect. Um, Unless it's just fog, but I think it's I think it's water. Um, I, I wonder why you have 
the, the top, look at the top of the image where it's all white, the, the sky. So ask yourself this question. If I just cut this off at the horizon line, would that, would that really make a difference? Would that change this picture at all? Yeah, then the judge would say it's cropped too tight. But, but you know, I, I, don't think, I don't think it makes a difference. I think you have that added on there. I don't think it's adding to the picture. Um, it's a good choice for black and white. I, I, I like the um, black and white effect on this. It certainly probably wouldn't look that much different if it was in color. So I think it's a good choice for black and white. Uh, just, I would just take the top off. We'll look again, seven. Nine. Eight. 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 Okay, sign B long exposure. I can only see with one eye now. Oh, no. <laughs> Honorable okay, mention. Waiting to taxi, Al Figuccio. Solo burst, Bill Hansen. Commemorative Air Force P-51, Al Figuccio. And ghostly doc, Bill Hansen. Sustain? Yeah, I would, thank you. And equal merit? At the pier, Bill Hansen. Right for Milburn, assigned A, long exposure. Blue skies and sunshine. Okay. So somebody's starting to play with these artistic ones. So I like. So I like the theory here. You have a you have a nice zoom blur. Um, you know, I'm not so sure that it's I'm not sure that it's interesting enough for a zoom blur. Listen, I, I like I like the shutter speed that you used. I like the effect that you used, but I really think there has to be a little more contrast in the image or more colors in the image to make that zoom blur a little bit more interesting. I like the way you have it in the third. But I, I think there just needs to be more interest in the underlying image. Six. Beach. It is a beach. So again, the, the interest here is the foreground and the midground, right? I love the rocks. I, I you know, your beach looks awesome. Everything is super sharp. Um, you know, I think it's cropped well. I, I could tell you to crop it differently. You know, the rocks on the right might be cut off, but you know, I wasn't there. Those rocks could have not, no cut off. You know, if there was, it would be best to, to, to find a, a gap, but you probably couldn't. With that said, I, the, the way the, the rocks, it's kind of forms a leading line and it kind of leads you to those two rocks in the center. But I'm, to be consistent, I want to say what I said before. Do you really need that sky? Is that sky adding anything to this image? If you cut at the horizon or even a little south of the horizon and really panel kind of this, I think you might have a, I think it might be just as nice of an image. Um, let's look again, seven. <clears throat> Santa, 3.2 seconds. Okay, so. What does the longer exposure, how does the longer exposure make this image look different? Um, I'm, I'm not sure that it does. I mean, it's a nice picture, it's a nice snapshot, but I'm not sure if it has, you know, enough oomph to it. Six. Ocean tranquility. All right, so again, nice long exposure on the water, not so sure you need the sky. 
you know, the only time I include skies in images like this is if there's a sun or a moon or some spectacular clouds, because I, otherwise I, I just think it's negative space and it's negative space that's not really adding to the image. Um, the other thing, I think those rocks in the foreground are a little bit visually heavy. And, and I, I think they're just pulling my eye to those rocks. I'm wondering if you could either have been lower or higher in order to incorporate those waves into this rock a little bit more. But as it stands right now, I think that foreground rock is a little visually heavy and it's kind of just, my eye is just ending up there. Six. Surf's up. Okay, so, so here we're just focusing on the rock and you got a nice long exposure, you know, with the, with the water, um, with the water making kind of nice patterns around the rock. It's a nice, simple image, but it certainly, you know, has appeal to it. Seven. <laughs> Jack-o'-lantern, quarter second. So again, to be consistent, I asked the same question, is the longer exposure good? Or if I put this on 1 60th of a second and raise the ISO, would the picture be any different? And I think the answer is no. I mean, it's a, it's a nice picture, but I'm not sure if it's, really fitting the category uh, six. <clears throat> Afternoon in the park. So so really trying to trying to pan blur two things. That's pretty brave. Um, so when you do pan blur, so you got you got an exposure here, you got you got you got you know, a little bit of a blur, a panning blur effect on the on the background, right? Obviously the car is different because it's going a different speed. But what I look for is, is, is the subject sharp? And I'm not so sure that the subject is sharp. It's very hard to do a pan blur from this angle. You know, what you want to do is you want to start following them and follow them. And as they start to get in front of you, start clicking the shutter and follow through like a baseball bat or a tennis racket, follow through all the way. And that's usually how you're going to get that pan blur. But as it is now, it looks more like there's most unintentional motion blur in this picture as opposed to doing a, a pan blur. Six. Sandy Hook C. <clears throat> Okay, I like the I like the angle you have in this picture. See a little more interest in the sky. It makes the sky a little more worthy to keep in there this time, right? I just wish those rocks weren't weren't cut off in the on the right side of the frame. But we'll look again. So, blanketed trees. Point eight seconds. So does somebody else want to say what I'm going to say? <laughs> but but think think about that. Like and you know it's a valid thought. What does the long exposure really do for me, or how does it make this picture different? And and to be honest with you, what you're getting here with your eight second exposure is what happens when people shoot like um, a cityscape. If they if you shoot the New York skyline and your exposure is too long. What happens is all the windows start to look soft because the buildings move and then they don't look like clear windows anymore and your picture doesn't look sharp. And that's what's happening here. The long exposure is making your picture not look sharp. So, so be, be aware of that. Um, six. Eight. Nine. Eight. Okay, signed A, long exposure. Honorable mention. Beach, Jim Chalan. Sandy Hook C, Jim Chalan. And equal merit, surfs up, Jim Chalan. See what happens when you pay 10 bucks to the judge? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
this is all it takes <laughs> to keep that quiet. <laughs> For Melbourne, a sign salon, long exposure, tranquility. <clears throat> okay, nice image, really nice exposure, right? Not always an easy exposure here, right? Because you got a sky that's relatively bright, so you got to be careful of blowing that out to get a little bit of a longer exposure on the waterfalls. Um, you know, I, I like the way that you. Um, I like the way it's composed. I like the building. I think the, the image is pretty balanced. Um, I, I'm, there's nothing you can do about it because it's there. I'm slightly bothered by that chimney in the back on the left, but um, otherwise I think this is a really nice image. Seven. Path to paradise. Okay, so, so we got a little intentional camera movement. So, so notice how, how much more a bit of a stronger composition, right? If we compare it to the other, the zoom blur we saw before, we have a little bit of a better composition. So if this wasn't, if there was no movement in this, we have a leading line, we have nice, lots of nice colors. Um, your, your eye gets pulled through the image. It gets, it gets, it gets pulled to the back where there's nice colorful flowers. So I think this is a good, good choice for intentional camera movement. Um, I think your, you know, whatever shutter speed you chose is good. Um, and again, just again, nitpick in this group, uh, there's a, there's a, the, the bottom right, just a tiny bit bright. Be careful of having things in the foreground that are really bright. Just, just, just use the dodge tool and just, just go down just a hair, but that's, that's a very minor nitpick. Otherwise, nicely done. Seven. <clears throat> Soft swirls. Okay. So is the camera moving or is the swirl moving? That's the question. So, so again, so we're really getting into the abstract world here because I can't really tell what it is. So, so when you can't really tell what it is, you know, what does your mind do? Your mind starts thinking, what could this be? What is it? Do you like the colors? I think the colors are really cool. Um, you know, the, the, the colors play nicely. Um, just, just as a general abstract, I think this is pretty cool. I'm not 100% sure it, it being dead centered is, is my taste, but you know, that when you get into this abstract stuff, you know, it's almost purely subjective, especially when you get this abstract. So we'll look again, seven. The GSP. Okay, nice, nice long exposure with some light trails. Um, got the bridge that has about 56 lanes on it. Where the heck are you? Just stop the car. And... Still alive. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> going, up, going up to the Driscoll Bridge. Yeah. Okay. So, so I I love the curve. I love the curve, and I love the lights on the curve. What's going through my mind right now is. Do I like the signs in here? Are the lines of, are the signs a distraction or are the signs, you know, kind of giving me some sense of place? And it they obviously did give me a sense of place because if they weren't there, I wouldn't know where you were. Um, so we'll we're gonna give this a seven and let's see how it hits me the next time through. Niagara Falls sunrise. Okay, really nice image. I was just here at Niagara Falls. Such a fun place to shoot. I love your choice of shutter speed on this. Um, you know, I might have toned down the, the sun just a little bit. I, I, I like the light flare. I think it adds to the picture. Um, so 
I was recently at Niagara Falls and I was standing in the same exact spot. And what hit me, I was nine years old and I went to Niagara Falls with my family and I have a picture from this exact spot. That's cool. And it's pretty cool. because I, I was actually going to post it on Facebook because I still have the picture. <laughs> it wasn't a long exposure. It's in the middle of the day, but you know, it, it, it's kind of cool that I have the same exact picture. So I really like this. I, I like the flare. I might tone down the sun a little bit, but the, how cool is the effect on that water? Like that water just has a, you know, I could feel the power of those falls, seven. Main nights. Okay, so nicely done Milky Way, nicely done on the water, um, you know, beautiful composition. You, you know, it's nighttime, it always goes through my head. A lot of times when they come out of camera, they, the, uh, you know, the based on your color temperature, the water gets a little blue. I might pull back a little bit on that water, but otherwise this image is, meaning pull the blue saturation down a little bit, but this, this image is really nice. So. Sparklers. This is, you know, when you're really getting into photography, when you're like sitting at a nice fire, relaxing, like, I got an idea. <laughs> Start doing sparklers and take pictures of it. So, so cool effect, really cool effect. I like the fact that you've got the fire in there. I wish that window wasn't in the back, but otherwise this is pretty cool, seven. Cherries in bloom, ICM. Okay. So, so, so this, this is, you know, intentional camera movement, abstract, but not, we know what it is. It's pretty clear. If, if the title didn't say it, we would still know what it is. How beautiful are those colors, right? How beautiful are the colors of the blossoms and the green? And you could just see enough in the middle of water to know that it's water, right? So, you know, you're at the edge of a pond or something. And, and I, I like the tight crop. I, I think that you, you, you did well with that. Seven. Cranford fireworks. Okay. So very nice, cool sky. So you see how the foreground and firework picture just gives it a little bit more perspective. And even if it's not that interesting, it still gives it a little bit more perspective. And I really, I really like that. Your fireworks exposed perfectly. That, what a great sky, seven. City reflections. Okay, so so just look at the composition in this in this picture, right? We have a foreground, we have a midground, and we have the background. We have beautiful leading lines, right? Not only are the pylons leading your eyes, right? Your your the lights from the buildings are leading your eyes. It, it's really well balanced. Sort of curves to the right, and where does it bring you? Right to the tallest building, right? So whoever did this definitely is thinking about composition. Everything is sharp that needs to be sharp. Your exposure, you wouldn't have that beautiful reflection, you know, if you didn't do the exposure right. So um, nice seven. Villa. So I'm debating if this is, and, and it doesn't matter. And, you know, you can tell me after, because I'm just trying to think, is, is this like a multi-exposure? Is this a texture? Or is this just like a little intentional camera movement? Um, you know, that's just my technical side, trying to think what it is. Um, I think your composition's nice. I think the field gives you a lot, of, uh, the, the field and the green bushes on the left sort of give you a nice leading line. Um, you know, I, I I might push that tree in the house a little bit more over to the right, but not a, not a huge not a huge deal. Um, you know, again, if you if you put a texture on it, which it looks like, I'm not sure if that texture is distracting or if it's adding to the picture. Um, and again, when you start getting into this, it becomes very subjective, but Let's look at this one again, seven. 
trapeze. <clears throat> okay, nice effect. Um, good shutter speed you chose. Um, your picture sharp, your exposure is good, etc. I might lose that truck that's on the bottom right, but you can't do anything about it. This is fern swirl. Okay. So again, look at the colors are really cool, right? So using some camera movement, line up your colors right, and you know your picture just turns perfect. Um, this is this is just good all around, in my opinion. Seven. The lady and the fireworks. Okay, nice. I mean, my only, again, just to nitpick, this is a beautiful picture. Bottom line, it's a beautiful picture. Um, let's, let's just say this was a competition that it came, came down between this and another image. I'm not 100% sure those buildings in the back are as sharp as they could be. I don't, I don't know if they need to be sharp, but in my view, they might be a little bit soft. And the only other thing is, I, I wish the fireworks weren't cut off. But again, I, I don't know. I wasn't there. I don't know, you know, if it would make the image differently. But with those minor nitpicks said, you know, I think it's beautiful. I, I like the effect of the flag. Um, I like you have her on the left and you get the fireworks coming right out. Um, beautiful capture of the combined fireworks. Um, nicely done. So. Autumn waterfall. Okay, so you got a you got a beautiful swirl there, beautiful speed on your um, um, on your water. Um, I like the way the trees on the upper right they sort of they sort of fall down in the same way as the um, um, as the water does. A little bothered by that pole or I'm um, pole that the tree that's in the top right. You know, you could have probably just cropped that out or even cloned it out. Um, you know, I'm sure you included everything in this picture because you wanted to show some of those fall colors, which which I don't fault you for. I think that that's pretty cool. Love the effect of the swirl in the water. Um, seven. <clears throat> Reflections. Okay, so it's like, I think the Asbury Park carousel. Some really neat drone stuff with reflections over this thing. Um, so again, I'm trying to think of the long exposure part of this, and I don't think that that's gelling too well. Um, you know, I realize it's dark out, but the the um, I mean, that stuff is light. It doesn't require really long exposure. Six. Okay. Yikes. Got a lot of work to do here. Really. Eight. Eight. Oh, yeah. Give it a nine. <laughs> See, it must be his. <laughs> I gave it an 88. <laughs> oh, you gave it an 88? Yeah. yeah. It really must be his. <laughs> Eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. So again, I said before, like if you go through pictures quickly, your your own, you know, where does your eye first go to? Believe it or not, my eye keeps going up to those windows in the top, and they're really distracting to me. Seven, nine, nine, nine. 
eight. Eight. Nine. Nine. Nice job, everybody. Beautiful pictures. Okay, assigned salon, long exposure, honorable mention. Tranquility, Lenny McDonald. Path to Paradise, Natalie Gregorio. Soft Swirls, Alan Stein. The GSP, Al Brown. Should have given it a five. <laughs> <laughs> Villa, Arlene Sofranzetti. Trapeze, Lenny McDonald. See, next time you got to get in and move that fire, that, that fireworks truck up. <laughs> That's what it looks like one of those fireworks trucks, doesn't it? <laughs> Autumn Waterfall, Ryan Kershaw. And equal merit. Niagara Falls Sunrise, Ryan Kershaw. Main Nights, Arlene Sopranzetti. Cherries in Bloom, ICM, Natalie Gregorio. Cranford Fireworks, Ellen Stein. City Reflections, Ryan Kershaw. Burn Swirl, Natalie Gregorio. The Lady and the Fireworks, and Stein. On to the opening. Mm -hmm. For Milburn, Open B. F-22, full afterburners. Nice. So when I was at the New York Air Show, there was a female pilot flying in this thing. It's really cool. Um, so, You certainly, you certainly caught, you, you certainly caught it with the afterburners going. Um, you know, you don't always see that red glow in the back, which, which is is pretty cool. I kind of wish it wasn't flying quite as far away from you. Like if it was a bird, I'd say the head angle is kind of bad. Um, but it's same thing with the airplane. I, I wish it was turned a little bit more toward you. Um, so we'll look again. Seven. <laughs> Going home after sunset. Okay, so so again, you're you're using a lot of negative space in this image. The, the, the sky is incredible, right? I, I like your silhouettes. So the questions in my mind about this picture. First thing, the one thing that bothers me is the lower left, right? Either clone them out or or include the whole the whole tree. You know, the tree at the bottom, you know, in the middle, I'm not so sure. Be, be careful of having two subjects. I mean, it's okay here because you sort of have a lot of negative space. So, but sometimes when you have two subjects, your eye goes back and forth between the subjects. I think you're using enough negative space here. But I really think, I really think this would be better if you just had the parachutes and didn't have the stuff in the bottom. I think that they're, they're just kind of distracting, but let's look at this one again. Seven. Night air show. Okay, so the first of all, the first basic thing when you have a dark image like this is put a white stroke line around it. Always think in competitions, think about the presentation. You know, if you were gonna hang your picture in an art gallery, you use special matting, special paper, and you know 
special lighting just to make the image look good because I don't know where the image ends and I don't know where the screen starts, right? So if you just put, if you don't know how to do it, I can tell you later, just put a white stroke line around the image. With that said, you know, I'm not exactly sure what I'm looking at. I think just the, the orange, it kind of looks like a jack-o'-lantern to me. I know it's not one, but I, I probably would just crop around that. I'm not sure what's going on above it. And maybe it's just me, but I'm not sure of what's going on in this picture for six. Open B, honorable mention, Night Air Show, Alpha Buccio. Oh, did I? Probably your image again. <laughs> I think I messed up. Hold on. Let me try this again. You gave, because they should both be. Oh, you gave both people better. Oh, you know what it is? I'm so used to doing equal merit honorable mention that that's oh. how I did. Okay. Yeah. So let me try this again. Why did you do all three? It's, you can just fix. So yeah, it's, it's just going to take you to the images that get the score. So, you, yeah, this was eight. That's just, uh, wait, so that one's right. It's just one of them got stuck as honorable mention. So, so you can hit the lead. The deleter facts, but there you go. Yeah, now you can do the score. Okay. So I will mention. There we go. And that should be. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Try this again. Open B. Honorable mention. F22 full afterburners Alpha Gucci. Going home after sunset Alpha Gucci. And for Milburn, open A, reflections. Okay, well, really cool reflection. Um, again, just, just a little nitpick. I'm not sure I, I would, I'm not sure if you left the top, the top left there that looks like there's some pavement. I'm not sure if you left it there on, on purpose. Um, to show that it's a puddle or something, but I, I think other than that, I, I think it's a really, really nice image, um, but I probably wouldn't have included that. So. Mighty Duck. Okay, the little hoodie is prancing by the big count of the goose. Okay, so I, I mean, this is a really good composition. You know, mm -hmm. you got the, it's like three ducks in a row. I guess they're not ducks. <laughs> <laughs> three goose in a row and a, and a hoodie with a really nice reflection. Um, not the greatest of light, but you know, I think you did a good job. Be, be really careful on these birds. You know, just look at the chest of the, of the geese and the hood and the hoodie might be a little hot all right not i'm not sure if it's blown completely but you know always have the blinkies on in your camera when you're doing this and as soon as you take the picture really look for those blinkies and if they are lower your exposure a little bit i'm not sure if they're hot but they're, they're right on the border but anyway otherwise good image seven fireworks So I guess you got a little, still got a little blue hour left there. Um, you know, I'm not so sure that, I, I think you're, 
I'm not sh I'm not sure that they're in focus, which is why they look a little thicker than the other fireworks we saw before. Now, it's always hard to tell. Focus is a little difficult. But, you know, usually with fireworks, as soon as the first bright one goes, I click it and then I just put it on manual. And, and this way I don't accidentally move the focus. But um, be careful of the focus. And then, like, your 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 trails going up might be a little bit too high. Since. Splash. Trying to sneak another one of your long exposures in here. Well, this isn't this isn't quite a long exposure, but um, it's cool. It's a nice composition. Um, but the rock in the foreground is just a little visually heavy, but you know, I think otherwise it's pretty well done. Seven. Hallowed halls. Okay, nice symmetrical architecture. Um, Good choice for black and white um, because you, you have textures, you had shapes in there, and I think that makes for good black and white pictures. Um, you have it cropped nice and even. It's intentional. The, the, the top right and top left, you cut those off, but you cut them off perfectly even so that, you know, I know that was intentional. I know you didn't just accidentally go too far to the right or too far to the left. It has a really nice flow to it and a really nice composition. So, light painting. Okay, I, I'm going to say the same thing as I said for the other one. I'm not sure this is in focus. You know, even though there's motion and everything else, I think the picture still needs to be in focus. And I don't, I think these need to be sharper. Six. View from the bridge. Okay, so, so, you know, the little bit of snow we had this year, if this was taken this year, you got out, I guess. Um, so again, you have a nice leading line. The only thing that bothers me on this image is there's really no interest in the sky, right? The sky is really kind of bright. You know, this might be an image you might want to think of putting in black and white, um, but I, I just think there needs to be more interest in, in the sky, six. Pine Hall, okay. So there's a lot I like about this image, but here's, here's my problem. First of all, your exposure is good. I like what you're looking at, but here's my problem. My problem is your right and left sides. So this structure you have on the right here, like you cut the base of it off. And I'm wondering why you did that. And you kept this structure in on the left side to the left of the light there. Do you really need that whole structure in there? I think it's kind of bright and I think it's kind of pulling your eye. I think if this image was, if you moved over, and, and again, I say this, I have no idea what's over here. But to me, it would be a little more balanced if you were just turned a little bit to the right, right to the left of the light, cropped it and had this full structure that's in the bottom right in there. Otherwise, it's a beautifully done image. So we'll look again. So. Spaceship. OK. So I have no idea what this is. It's a spaceship. Did anybody go to space recently? Did I miss that trip? I think this is a drone chain. Somebody else said you're grown up in space. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, so, you know, to me, this goes in the category of abstract. I don't know what it is. Um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if there's a lot of appeal here. I'm thinking that, like, it, I think this would be a lot stronger if it was like hanging on the wall and I could spend 10 minutes to look at it. But, you know, I'm not exactly sure what it is and I'm not exactly sure what's going on with it. And, you know, it, it's 
to me, it creates a little more tension looking at it because I'm like, what the heck is it? Like, I want to know. Um, so, six. Eight. <clears throat> Nine. Eight. Nine. Open A, honorable mention, reflections, Jim Chalan. Splash, Jim Chalan. Pine Hall, Charlene Federowitz. And equal merit, Mighty Duck, Charlene Federowitz. Howard Hall, Charlene Federowitz. Last but not least, care for Milburn Open Salon, shock and awe. Well, you certainly caught action here. You certainly got a story. You know, you got the other players looking. You got a little bit of the fans in the back looking. Um, your exposure is good. You know, things like basketball, volleyball, man, they're tough to shoot without having strobe set up in the gymnasium. Um, seven. Yellow warbler. Okay, so beautiful capture of the warbler. The only thing that bothers me, and you ask yourself, is there anything in this picture that's bothering you? What's, what's bothering me is the top is really bright, right? And it's out of focus. Most of the picture is re relatively in focus. Your, your bird is perfectly sharp. I think you held the yellows. A lot of people blow the yellows out on these birds. Um, but that top piece is bugging the heck out of me, right? Even, even though it's out of focus, if you just use the burn tool and just burn that down, there's a million ways to do it. Just darken that up, it'll make the bird pop even more than it's popping. But we're looking at this one again, so. Swirls and balls. Whoa, man, purple haze. <laughs> <laughs> this should have been the last picture because now I'm like swirling around. <laughs> well, well, certainly not an easy picture to get. That, that looks like a lot of fun. So if I come in two weeks, Ellen, like we're gonna do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So th this is just a fun picture. It's always fun to play with light, light refraction. It's always fun to play with, with, with reflections like this, with glass. It's a lot harder than you think it is. Um, I mean, my only slight nit is that bottom. But the glass on the bottom with the reflection, I just wish you didn't crop it right across where that circular thing is. I wish you gave it, you know, two millimeters more, but otherwise really nice. Seven. Ready to launch. Does everybody here know that the Cranford Milburn Club was banned from air shows? <laughs> <laughs> because, because we... Um, I forget the exact story, but um, we all went as a group and they, I, it was a long time ago. I forget exactly what happened, but um, they, they told us we had to give them the rights to the pictures or something, some stupid thing, which was, which was wrong. And I, so I put mine online and I, I put it for sale for $15,000 <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I sent it to the lady because she said, you people are never allowed back at this air show again. <laughs> like, yeah, she told us that, that we were not allowed to sell or show any of the pictures because they have the rights to it, which is not, which was not true. Um, anyway, beautiful colors. 
against the beautiful sky. Um, you know, the picture just gives you a nice feel. Um, you know, with the colors and the balloons and a summer day and, and everything else. Um, I kind of wish there was three balloons, but I think that the perspective with the larger balloon and the smaller balloon in the back, you know, when you hear about you shouldn't have two things in the picture, it, it all has to do with do you, does your eye bounce back and forth or do you look at the whole picture? I think the way that this is set up, the composition you have, it makes you look at the whole picture rather than your eye bouncing back and forth. Um, seven. You should see the other guy's car. <laughs> you told me you got a new car. <laughs> nice. nice. <laughs> I'm cool. I fit you perfect. <laughs> that one hanging in your car. I used to. The curb feelers. Oh, yeah. yeah. I remember putting those on my grandfather's car. <laughs> Okay, so certainly an interesting subject. You know, I'm not sure for competition if it's if it's strong enough. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bothered by the guys on the right and that building on the right. Um, it certainly, listen, it certainly held our interest, didn't we? we? We talked about it, but as a competition image, I'm just not sure that it's that it's strong enough. Six. Dragonfly. Okay, well, you certainly. You know, sharp as anything, right? Your exposure is is really nice. Your expo your um your focus is dead on. Be careful of bright spots. I'm not sure if you use flash on this, but you, you notice the stem above the head or or in front of the head, whatever position we're in, and then you notice the stem on the bottom, a little bit bright. Okay, and in a pure nature sense you know, you're going to get dinged on things like that. So, so just be careful of that. But otherwise, your, your, your um, dragonfly is caught perfectly. Seven. Lily pad. Okay, so beautiful, beautiful composition. Um, may, may, maybe cut a little bit off the right to put that thing right in the third, but, but you probably didn't want to do that because of all the beautiful detail on this right side. And, and because of that, I, I, I don't mind the way that you cropped this. I probably would have ended up cropping it the same way. Um, your exposure is perfect. Your focus is really good. Um, you know, I love the details. This is sort of one of those art and nature pictures. You know, look at all the beautiful detail in there. Seven. Hunters in the haze. Well, I, 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 I like the lens flare. You know, usually you try to not get lens flare, but it kind of adds, it comes diagonally through the picture. Um, your birds are silhouetted, which, you know, what, what's nice about this is it does give you a feel if you've been out, you know, at Forsyth or Sandy Hook or wherever looking for these birds, the osprey, you know, this is kind of the feel that you get early in the morning. It gives me that feeling. Um, you know, I, I guess your exposure is, is the best it's going to get. I think everything in, is in focus that needs to be in focus. Let's look at this one again. Seven. Blue Dasher. Okay, so there you go. Have him looking right at you. Um, right on an interesting subject. Good exposure. He's sharp. Seven. Pink snowball dahlia. Okay, so nice muted background. It almost looks three dimensional, doesn't it? It almost looks like it's it's popping off the page. Um, there's a couple there's a couple little things that bother me. If you if you look at about two o'clock and you look at the edge, now it doesn't matter if this was done in post processing or if this is just the picture, but it sort of looks like something may have been the gazy a little bit there, as Phil Echo would say. <laughs> Phil Echo's uh, term. Um, and again, it might not have been, but you know, when you when you know what you know about, you know, post processing, it, it always has to be in your mind. With that said, like, right, it's almost three dimensional. It almost pops off the page. 
but just be careful what you're doing with your background if you're if you're doing anything and and not only be careful if you're doing something but be careful if you're not doing something just to kind of make sure that things don't merge and kind of make it look like the background was fugazi seven <laughs> flowers perfectly sharp and exposed the big bug Okay, well, certainly caught a nice, you have a nice capture there. Um, everything is sharp that needs to be sharp, 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 sharp. Um, you know, I'm, I'm debating if he's a little bit turned away from you. And again, you know, you might not think it matters if you don't do a lot of nature, but in nature photography, head angle is important. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're certainly sharp on this guy. Um, so there's two little appendages sticking out the back. Um, one is crossing the right frame. It's like a, it's like dark. And then there's another one by the wing, a little bit in, in the front of that. Now I'm not sure if that's part of the bug or if that's, or if that's something in the background, those are just a little bit distracting, but otherwise nicely done seven. Poetry not in motion. Oh, so you waited till that merganza started flapping. Again, again, and it doesn't necessarily go on the scoring, but a little bit on the head angle. But um, so beautiful bird, beautiful capture. Might be a little bright in the in the head there, um, but he's certainly sharp. He certainly got a good shutter speed. I love the effect on the water. Seven. Bear Mountain Bridge. Okay, now this looks like a drone image. Maybe not. Um, doesn't matter. So really nice exposure, right? The, 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 this picture has a really nice feel to it. I, I love the composition. It's a common composition, but you know it's common because it's a nice composition um it's very balanced you have a line that kind of pulls you through um you know on a a lot of times when it's snowy but bright you know it's kind of bright cloudy that day sometimes those exposures are tough and i think you did a nice job seven triple the fun Okay, so I'm assuming this is a multi-exposure. I, I, I love the colors. I think the colors are really nice and makes it strong. Seven. I like the diagonal too. I'm coming, Mama. Okay, so really nice capture of the osprey. Um, you know, beautiful background. He's tack sharp. He's got a catch. Usually they get these fish and they bite the head off and then bring it back to the nest. So you don't always see the head unless you get them coming right out of the water. Seven. Burrowing owl. So these are fun to shoot. Um, I've shot them down in Florida. I don't know where else you could shoot them. And where I've shot them, it's just like in a neighborhood, like you're in somebody's backyard shooting them because that's where they live. And I forget the name of the town, but um, you know, beautiful pose. Um, he's tack sharp. I, I mean, I, again, and it's not even going to the score. Maybe I'm not sure why you have all that all that room on the right. You might have been trying to keep him in the third. If that was the case. I might have put it a third the other way. Um, but beautiful seven. Red Gerber Daisy. Okay, so be beautiful picture, very sharp. I, I think your reds are too hot on this one. If you're if you're if you're using your histogram, make sure you're also using your RGB histogram, especially when you're you're shooting red and yellow stuff. Because a lot of times your regular his, histogram looks okay. 
But if you look at the color one, the red channel is blown out. And I, I think it's blown out because you're starting to lose a lot of detail in some of those reds. And I think at this point, it's got to be, the exposure has to be perfect, six. Ready for takeoff. Okay. So a nice cormorant. You know, again, not the perfect head angle, but he is turned around and he's kind of looking at you. So you do have that that eye. I think you got a nice capture on the eye. He's sharp. Um, seven. Sweet ride. Okay, I love I love the angle on this. I love the low angle and probably using a wider angle lens looking up at this. And I, I think it's 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 nicely done. A cool sky. I don't mind that post there because it looks like it has something interesting. Um, there's something in the middle of the left that's a little distracting, but uh, seven. Butterfly. Okay, so good, good capture of the butterfly. I think he's sharp. Um, it's a little bright. Your background's a little bit bright. And again, I, I wonder why you included so much in this frame. Um, and again, it's usually a personal choice about how much you want to crop and how much you don't. I think the leaf on the bottom right, the one with the holes in it, it's just a little distracting to me. I just wonder if you just cut that off, I think your image would not really be different because it's about the butterfly. And, you know, you have enough flower there that it gives you environment as well, even if you crop this tighter. Um, and, and I just darken that background down, six. Tulip three times. I feel like that crease in the screen is hurting this picture. It's not going into the scoring, but um, obviously, but I feel like that's hurting the appeal of this. So beautiful colors. Um, you know, again, sort of abstract, but we know what it is. And the colors are correct. The colors are beautiful. They complement each other. Seven. <clears throat> Nine, eight, eight. I'm sorry, that's a nine. I'm sorry. Nine, eight, nine, seven. Nine, eight, 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 nine, 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 eight. In Salon, honorable mention, Yellow Warbler on Ian Sopranzetti. Dragonfly, Ryan Kirshner. Pink Snowball Dahlia, Ellen Stein. The Big Bug, Ron Dank. Poetry Not in Motion, uh, Lenny McDonald. Ready for takeoff, Ron Deck. Sweet ride, Lenny McDonald. And equal merit, shock and awe, Al Brown. Swirls and balls, Alan Stein. Ready to launch, Ron Deck. Lily pad, Natalie Gregorio. 
Blue Dasher, Arlene Sopranzetti. Bear Mountain Bridge, Ryan Kershaw. Triple the Fun, Natalie Gregoria. I'm Coming Mama, Al Brown. Brewing Owl, Arlene Sopranzetti. Tulip Three Times, Natalie Gregoria. That is all. Nice job. Job, Are those the Cosmos on the parkway? No, I actually oh. throw them. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions online? If not, we'll say good night to everybody online. Seeing everyone. Oh, yeah. Say it again. <laughs> 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 <laughs>